Hallo und herzlich willkommen zu Folge 432 von Alle Wege für nach Ruhm. Heute mit Tiffany und Valtteri. Tiffany Cromwell ist eine professionelle Fahrradfahrerin. Valtteri Bottas ist ein professioneller Autofahrer. Und mit beiden habe ich die letzte Woche verbracht. Und auf einem der Reisen in einem Flugzeug von Utah, von Page, Utah nach Miami, Florida, habe ich gedacht, wäre es eine gute Idee, das aufzunehmen. Eine kleine Folge Podcast. Ich äh, habe zwei, drei Sachen, liefen jetzt nicht so ganz so sauber dazu. Also es, es gibt ein paar Exit-Szenarien und äh, Triggerwarnungen, die ich an dich kurz loswerden will. Erstens, es ist halt Englisch. Und wenn du Englisch nicht magst, was ich verstehen kann, dann ist diese Folge leider nichts für dich. Mein gebrochenes Denglisch trifft auf äh, Tiffany's australisches Englisch, trifft auf Walteris finnisches Englisch. Walteris, glaube ich, noch am besten. Ich bin wirklich begrenzt. Äh, das ist, wie es ist. Zweitens, es hat in einem Flugzeug aufgenommen. Das heißt, da waren sehr viele Störgeräusche, die haben wir versucht rauszufiltern. Es klingt jetzt immer noch nicht so richtig geil. Es ist nicht eigentlich mein Anspruch an Qualität, äh, wie ich das aufnehmen wollte. Ging aber halt da nicht anders. Und äh, falls, das, falls du ein sehr audiophiler Mensch bist, solltest du vielleicht heute mal skippen. Drittens, und das habe ich echt unterschätzt, du schreist dich echt langsam, also es ist halt sehr laut drumherum, deswegen rede ich sehr weird, also ich schreie teilweise und wir schreien uns da unterschiedlich an und äh, das ist ein komisches Gesprächsklima, was da entstanden ist, weil fünftens ist es noch dazu so, dass Tiffany wirklich nicht besonders laut redet, per se schon nicht, also wenn wir Abendessen sind, dann habe ich immer Probleme, sie zu verstehen und fühle mich ganz, ganz alt, weil ich denke, so müssen sich Menschen, die äh, Hörgeräte brauchen, fühlen. Dabei brauche ich noch gar kein Hörgerät, sondern sie redet wirklich einfach per se nicht so besonders laut. Walteri sowieso, ich hatte echt Probleme, sie zu verstehen, deswegen habe ich manchmal total weird reagiert, weil ich während meiner Antwort noch versucht habe, rauszufinden, was sie gerade gesagt hat, was so ein bisschen im Dunkeln getappt bin, weil meine Ohren einfach nicht gut genug sind. Lange Rede, kurzer Sinn, vielleicht nicht die allerbeste Folge, vielleicht aber auch trotzdem interessant, weil dich äh, interessiert, was wir so machen und warum wir so rumhängen und was da so passiert und vielleicht auch ein bisschen dieses ganze Ding äh, eines, äh, ja, verschied also es ist schon eine verrückte Welt, in der die halt unterwegs sind, er fährt Formel 1, sie fährt Rennrad und wie diese Welten zusammenkommen und wie wir das so verbringen und was die so machen und die haben einen Gin rausgebracht, der wirklich sehr gut schmeckt, nicht Ganz so gut wie Secret Gin, dem, der tatsächlich beste Gin der Welt. Und mit Wonderleaf auch ein sensationelles, nicht alkoholisches Produkt dazu. Dazu erzähle ich dir aber später mehr, weil ich mache ganz viel mit denen dieses Jahr. Lange Rede, kurzer Sinn. Äh, AWFNR geht in eine neue Runde. Heute mit Tiffany Cromwell und Valtteri Bottas. Und sorry, falls es nicht die Standards sind, die wir normal versuchen hier herzustellen. Äh, am Dienstag wird es wieder so wie es gewohnt wird. Beste Grüße und am Dienstag ist auch wieder Deutsch. Viel Spaß mit der Folge. Hey Tiffany. Hey, Valtteri. Hello. Um, Hi, Paul. Welcome to my podcast. <laughs> There is some background sound in here, but I can make that go away because uh, we're in a plane and I'm going to make it go away now. Amazing, right? Wow. Yeah. How did you do that? Yeah, it's technique. Like, you can filter audio, but it's kind of hard to filter it. But now it is. Tiffany, how many Olympics did you do? I've only been to the one so far. Take care. So, um, you are an Olympic cyclist. You are also the girlfriend of Valtteri and you're a friend of mine now. And uh, you speak, you're from Australia, Brisbane, or no, which? Adelaide. Uh, Adelaide, sorry. Adelaide, Australia. And Adelaide. Remember, we learned yeah, that the other week? Yeah, that's the... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> here we are. Um, Sometimes I'm struggling understanding you if you're speaking very fast. So the first thing I have to ask you, if, if I can at one point speak slow, just for me, because I'm German and uh, 
my yeah, I'm, I'm, your English is very fast. Okay, I will try to speak like this. <laughs> that's that's the way to go. Um, we're on the way to Miami. We had a couple of days together. Uh, what's been your highlight so far? What were, and and walk us through what happened the last four or five days. Well, five days or last Monday. week? Monday. Uh, week, yeah. We, well, we met we, Monday night. Yeah, yeah, we landed straight in from Europe into LAX, down to the Ribkey Barbecue. <laughs> How was the... Oh, we, uh, I want to Yeah, start we started with, with the barbecue. <laughs> straight off the plane, not jet lagged at all. Newport Beach. And you're not eating red meat, so um, it's, a, it's a topic for Mr. Bottas over here. So, how did you like the barbecue? What's what's your first impression? I loved it. For a long time, I've been always wanted to come to Ripke Barbecue. You know, I've seen all the content on social media, and it looks so good. And it didn't fail. You know, I got some pieces of meat that I didn't have to bite. It just melt on my tongue, and it was so good. So my parents-in-law were there. Um, it's been kind of a private. My my daughters were trying to convince you into eating red meat and stuff. Uh, it's been quite a private evening, I would say. But still, I enjoyed it a lot. And I was, I have to admit, I, I was a little bit proud of because sometimes I screw the meat up because I'm not eating that much meat anymore that I'm not constantly cooking it. Um, but uh, you learn a new. Well, what's your most favorite? steak from now on what are you gonna order from now on oh it was the the snake river skirt steak uh, yeah so uh, good and better than kobe again. so <laughs> uh, snake river skirt and um but we did some non-vegan like like non-meat vegan stuff as well yeah we yeah tried, the bread was pretty good yeah we we tried and to flat bread yeah. some veggies and yeah salad and we introduced yeah. to you our oath gin how was that did you like it um yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But we gotta explain this. There's a gin you guys do, and um, I tried it for the first time, and it's been totally different to German gin, because you do it in a different way. And I have to admit, the gin and tonic you did with the apple and the cinnamon was the best gin and tonic I've ever had. So the gin is... So it's distilled with oats, which that's what makes it so smooth, and then a spice with apple peel. So this is where it's like a little bit different flavor to your typical gins, but the oats gives it that smoothness. So you don't get the harsh taste that often... Okay, that's inside. the difference. And there yeah. is apple in there. Yeah, yeah, apple yeah. peel and multiple other botanicals, but uh, I would say the apple is the most dominant one. Yeah, and it tasted insanely good. And we had way too many on that evening, to be and, honest. Yeah, and the thing is, yes, in the in the next batch, the oats are going to come from my family farm in Finland, and the apples are going to come from around yeah, Alec Farm. Yeah, yeah. Finland? <laughs> yeah. Hey, I actually, about us. yeah, I have a, actually a plot where uh, there's some oats growing. Really? Yeah, yeah. For my porridge, you know, I need it. You can grow oats in Finland? Yes, That's you a, can, okay. but only one harvest a year. Okay. And yes, so then the apples are going to come from Adelaide Hills, where Tiffany's from. So it's Australia meets Finland meets gin, and here we are, oat gin. Uh, uh, is it available in, in Germany? It will be very soon by Amazon. So we have Amazon Web Shop, yep. which will be launched in any day now. I was skeptical, but you convinced me about it. And I had a couple of, I had a Negroni with it. It's insanely good too, because like, it's a perfect, like it gives a, it gives a little different twist to it, but not dominant, sweetie. Somebody gave me once a mango gin, which was horrible at the end, like, because a gin should be a gin still, but a tiny twist to it. And that's what I really like about it. I learned a lot about it. And you, you guys are, tonic is very important, I heard, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because obviously, yeah, there's more tonic than gin when you make the drink, uh, the gin tonic. So. It is super important that it's good quality. And yeah, yeah please Stay avoid sweeps. Sweeps. Yeah, <laughs> It is, right? Don't go to sweeps. Too sweet. Uh, well, what's the top three tonics, Henry? Or uh, we recommend fever, fever Tree. Fever Tree. Fever okay. Tree or any we other fever good tree, quality. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we had Fever Tree. Why did the drink turn blue when we put... It goes hazy. Uh, I would love to explain that in a nerdy quality? way, but it's so pure that once it gets contact with um, a bit of water, like from the ice or something, it uh, becomes hazy, which is kind of cool. So it's a quality. Yes. So if it's good quality gin, it gets hazy. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Learn something again today. So after that, we went cycling. How? I, I was. We went also, on a Ripke mystery tour. Yeah, the mystery Ripke. With, with your friend Todd. <laughs> Chica, we lost him very fast, unfortunately. <laughs> Oh, so, but it was your first time cycling in OC, right? So, yeah. how did you like cycling in OC? 
It was nice. Yeah, the trail you took us was so nice, beautiful. It was very nice. He also organized us a band. Nice. Yeah, it was a Mexican band that I booked. I always book them. If good friends are coming in, um, I kind of like music when we stop and have some some water. So I did that for you. And then we went and you were flying. Like, honestly, I was very impressed by both of your cycling skills because I did exactly that trail on a mountain bike five days before to check it out if it's good. Um, And I thought like, ah, not sure if we can go with gravel bikes, but uh, you guys flew through it. And uh, you did get a QOM, a queen of the month. Crown, because Come you on. were like egging me on, yeah. telling me I had to race. <laughs> it, it was preparation, right? Yeah, preparation for, for BWR, yeah. San Diego, San Marcos. We trained. Yeah. This is not for fun. And I, you got to admit, I get serious about stuff. So I I maybe go sometimes over the goal <laughs> to... to Uh, and we're, we're coming to that part because the, the day after, um, I got my medical, like Dr. Ripke, <laughs> came, came, came around and did massages and physio. Maybe I'm not a, I'm not a doctor, I'm a physio. Right? Yeah. So you forgot something. We finished the ride at the Paris Clubhouse. Oh, yeah. That was one of my highlights of the, of the trip, actually. It was. The beer. Oh. Yeah, yeah. After all these years, he's been begging to go to the Perry Clubhouse. Yeah. <laughs> It's another, got to go. another thing I've been, you know, I've been seeing on so social media feed and it just yeah. makes you want to be there and be part of the club. <laughs> and finally, that evening, I was part of the club. You were part of Perry Club. Yeah. And, and you, you, we had a beer that, that your face. <laughs> I mean, that was pure joy. Yeah. Like, was that one of the best moments in your life ever? Because Absolutely. Like, your face looked like that. Either you're a good actor, which I see. I saw you on the show on Netflix where you played that, like, guy that rides in circle, uh, uh, Drive to Survive. Great acting. Yeah, so yeah. The next, uh, whatever the next gig is, whatever you play next in your acting career, you're a great actor. Thank you. Really, Thank you. Really, really, really good. So the, um, no, the beer was nice. And the people, like, Run Club, we couldn't do Run Club. No, we were, were too tired. Yeah, we went too hard on that one. And uh, but then the day after, we started massages and massages. Like I really like spa things. So you saw my house. I have this way too many technical, in between the lines, stupid. Re like I don't really need recovery, but I have all the tools you need for recovery. So I was quite proud that finally I can use it on somebody who really needs it. Meaning, Tiffany, as an athlete, and Vatry, you're kind of an athlete too, I got to admit. Um, but kind of. Tiffany was racing on Saturday, one of the craziest races I've ever seen, 222 kilometers by 700,000 meters of climbing <laughs> and uh, in the dirt. But like, you looked beaten when we were there. And then, like the day, I mean, do you know what we did over the day while you were in the saddle? You, you cycled yeah, you, for how you, long? Eight hours, far too long. Oh. Stupidity, but this why is did what we why do. did you do that? I don't know. I just get egged on. I'm like, oh yeah, and I'll do the maybe the wave to the one shorter than the waffle ride. But I was like, no, no, I want to go against the top dogs. I want to be one of the top dogs, so I'm going to race with them. And then I question it about halfway through. What am I doing with 100k still to go? But here I am. I made the finish. I was broken. I had to sprint as well after eight hours. For They got you, right? On the very last hill you took? Yeah. So I was sitting third quite comfortably. And then I had two women catch me in the last 15K who were having a three-way battle. I managed to drop one of them on the climb, but then the other one dropped me on the climb. Then I came back at her on the last off-road sector and we we're passing. Like She passed me. I passed her a bit later. She passed me again. I got her again. She got me. Then it was in literally the last 500 meters. I managed to get back to her through the corners and like sprint. Meanwhile, my whole body was cramping. <laughs> Hence why you see the pictures afterwards and I was broken because normally you don't want to sprint after eight hours, but I had to sprint to get that last podium spot. Uh, I have to say, I've never seen you that destroyed like after a race like, right. yeah I wow. haven't been that destroyed after a race yeah. I don't think ever <laughs> and what's that stress? You, you had one number a stress level or something where you said like um, it's higher than Olympics higher than anything I've it ever was competed. two times bigger than most world tour women's world tour races it was 400 and something TSS which is like a training stress score we use on our training peaks um And yeah, so to give you a bit of a reference, like Paris Bay, which is quite a famous coupled race, was like 200 and something TSS. So this was double that. 
But once again, I have to ask you, why? <laughs> Just why do you do this? Because is it a personal challenge? Is it because it's too much, right? Well, basically, so it was proposed to me a couple of years ago by my team to do some gravel racing because for our team partners, it was an area that's growing. So to combine with my road schedule and I was all for it. But this was before knowing like how long the gravel races were. But I don't have to do the longest ones. But my, my challenge is there's good prize money in the biggest races. So I'm a little bit driven by that. If I do well, I get some good prize money. So do I want to fight for prize money or do I want to just do the lower category and there's no prize money for the effort? So that's the challenge. Like kill myself for some prize money or enjoy myself with less reward. But there were moments where you wanted to stop. Oh, completely. Okay. Like my legs were not feeling great even after 100k and I was like, I probably won't make this. But somehow I did and just kept pushing through. Problem was I was by myself for a long way coming back, which was headwind. Because at different times, you're with people, you're not with people, and that was character-building moments. A good thing is you're too stubborn and just stop. That is true. I am quite stubborn and hate to quit. And also, we were there. So so you would have disappointed the team. Exactly. Which, which was like, do you know what we did over the day? Well, I know you went and like got your tan on, you enjoyed some gin, you took some content. We did you some were... rednecking, yeah. as we call it. Like, we tried to get sunburned in the neck. Uh, in the middle of the field and, and we're very American and yeah. we're, uh, we tried more old gin which was very very good yeah. um, we had uh, you did have some bottles for me although I was desperately hoping you'd turn up somewhere in the back part of the course because I was completely out of water there I was like where are those guys I thought you got wine tasting through you know I saw some <laughs> vineyards and I was like they've probably got wine tasting right now yeah, yeah. and uh, we sort of supported another driver or rider we met did you hear that story? I, I did, like, Max. Actually, you have to tell that story. Yeah, Max, okay. you know, we were in this spot on on like a trail and then there was this bunny hop spot. It, there was like a thing that you, people had to like jump over. And then Max, unfortunately, kind of failed with a bunny hop. He hit the, that, that the rock curb quite hard with his rear tire, got a flat. And we helped him to fix the tire. Um, I had to try and stop some rider to get some more air, the CO2 cans, managed to do it. Um, then I, eventually he, he could, um, you know, continue the race. And in the end, he finished, finished strong. Which is actually impressive because normally Valtteri doesn't know how to change a tire. <laughs> Ask his experience of a previous gravel race where he had a puncture. No, I just got the CO2 can. Oh, and, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we didn't change it. No. Uh, we, were sort of, we, changed, we gave him moral support as well. So you are his mechanic, sort of, in bike. Like, is he building the bikes? Because we're traveling right now. And I have to admit, like, it's very close to when I go to ride my bike somewhere, it looks exactly like this. I take my bike, I throw it inside. It's like scratching the whole interior of a, a car. Just we're in a plane. So like the way we showed up with bikes and with the bags for the bikes, the two pilots who have to take care of the baggages, their face didn't look super nice that they're taking cyclists to Miami today, right? Yeah. Yeah, we don't really pa package uh, travel light. And we did have bike bags. Could put the bikes in there, but, you know, that would be I was that more... guy who brings his bikes, dirty bikes and 10 yeah. bags. I kind of saw so yesterday. I realized at one point there was there was a small hiccup, right? Like with the... the <laughs> Is this the plane we were supposed to be in, or is it like a replacement? Mm. I'm not sure. Help me out, Valtteri. Yeah. No, there was a small mistake. The plane originally, which was supposed to be actually a bit bigger and much better price, um, was booked for one day too late. S good, correct departure time, but just wrong wrong date. So lastminute.com had to find a new plane, and <laughs> we made it happen. <laughs> you mixed up the dates, so this happens to you still. That's that's very nice because I do mix up dates a lot, booking hotels and stuff, and then I realize afterwards, and uh, it makes me feel very good that this happens to you on a little bigger scale, probably. It's yeah, probably... and actually on this trip also we mixed up dates at the hotel. Yeah, so. we were supposed to stay among Ghani, Mangiri, only until Tuesday. Uh, we thought we were there till Wednesday, then I was looking at the booking just last week and I realized we were checking out on Tuesday. So suddenly we were roomless for the last night. So we were also one I day short there. you could there. have taken the plane that you... No, because that no, was that one was day too one late. Day too late uh, so. We need two okay, nights. So yeah. <laughs> two mistakes being one win all of us. No. Nah. But luckily, luckily they had a spare room that we could check into. But And yeah. I have to say with the plane mix up, I feel like I earned it because I was, you know, I've had such a great week and I was like, 
life is too perfect, too too good to be true, and of course something like this had to happen to punish me. It's running too smoothly. Yeah. Yeah, come on, that weekend was really nice. Like the whole yeah, yeah. Diego kind of experience, the way we went to dinner, the way we had like the day was like supporting you. And I have to admit, us, like Team Tiffany supporting you was on a scale from one to ten, on a scale of two in the amount of supporting because we we were not really good at it. And once we switched it for Sunday where Team Valtteri was supporting you and Tiffany took over and I drove the car and we we were a little we bit more professional in the uh, in the supporting part of it let's say that on the on the Saturday we were very professional in the living la vida loca part and then we got our timing also very off because it's hard to predict when you are where sort of yeah yeah we did try to do the live tracker but technology failed us um, but even though, although you weren't as many spots, it was nice to have the support. Like I haven't had that before. Like, yes, I have my professional team normally with Canyon Shram. Like when we're at the road races being gravel, I'm either just have Valtteri there or on my own. So it was kind of nice to have a bit of a crew and, you know, see you guys there. Made me smile even when I was hurting. And we were cheering for you in the, in, in the end sprint too. So yeah, I mean, awesome. at least you don't choose gravel, yeah. gravel chooses you. Um, it's a lifestyle, but um, there's was, a lot of strong women who race gravel because it is that distance. And you know, I come from the road; we race four hours max. So, you know, it was some hard competition for sure. And then you went there, Valtteri, and did second place on Sunday. So, there's a couple of other topics I want to talk about, just number wise. Third place for Tiffany. Second place, like I, I don't know if there's another race next weekend or something or this weekend. Um, is there like number wise it would make sense number one or or podium at least I, I mean this crew here we're the podium crew right yeah, yeah. we need we to can just continue that top step. yeah yeah, yeah. So just I, it's figured keep, out yeah yeah it's just keep scoring podiums yeah. yeah no matter which sport very very nice so after that you're cycling again so you are cycling a lot like you are really and I looked at your Strava you're you're quite a strong Strava influencer too like your kudos game is is legit. I like it. I do I do things in life that I that I enjoy and uh, cycling, riding my bike, it, especially with Tiffany, is is one of the things I I get really pleasure and and joy and and like you said, it's also like a bit of a life, lifestyle. And you know, it's I know it's pain in the ass now. We're like really tight with <laughs> with all the backs and my my bike on front of the back <laughs> on yeah. top of the backs here on the plane, but you know. It's, um, we lost the toilet. Yeah. Like the, yeah. normally, there's no access to the toilet, but we have limbo tip, which, <laughs> which you you tried. Like you I, made it happen. You used the toilet. I used the toilet. I squeezed yeah. through the little gaps and got in there, and it was quite okay. Yeah. So me and Paul, we are not drinking water. We are not. I'm not. Like I have no clue. There's no chance for me to get in that toilet. No. Like, it's, it's you're, no, I'm, you're screwed. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna, Eat some salt and <laughs> try to try to get all the fluid uh, in my body uh, not out there. I don't like first when you called and said like yeah I'm, I'm gonna come to Newport and then maybe you can join there and this and and around. I You're that like guy. I'm that guy. I'm that, third wheeling. Third wheel. I, I'm full on third wheeling here. I said like yeah I do that, but so I might stay. So <laughs> <laughs> how long? Well. Christmas, <laughs> or because <laughs> it's kind of cool. Yeah, like it's you, fun. the places you're staying in, that Amangiri thing. I've been there before. And how did you like? Why did you go to that crazy place uh, in Utah? Or it's in Utah, but it's close to Page, Arizona. We we love to explore. Love to you know check out cool places uh, when we have opportunities, like between our races. And this worked perfectly because we actually tried to go last year to Amangiri, but it was fully booked. So instead, we went to Wyoming to the Amangani. Amangani. Um, Which so, one's better? Oh, they're completely different ones, you know. Uh, Giri is 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 hard to beat. It's special. Yeah. yeah. And actually, I saw. I think it was last year you were there as well. So yeah. like another wannabe Ripke moment, you know. <laughs> he was there, so I want to do the same. <laughs> but yeah, we just love to explore. Yeah, and we saw pictures of it as well, like on your your Instagram and just in general, and it's got like incredible architecture and you know the design elements as well is pretty cool and so it's good hiking and riding so yeah, we're like the landscape is yeah. insane you know yeah. it looks so cool and it's kind of hard 
it's one of the few places I've been to that are way better. Like they're already crazy on Insta on pictures and everything, but it's insane to be there. Like if you if you are there, like parts of it can be translated, and you have to experience it. The sound, the the archi- like like the way the nature is around it, the way you're standing there, and it's like it's, it's just silence when you're there. Like yeah. dead quiet, and you get like people from the city go there and you see a sky full of stars like that you know some people have never seen that before like that's pretty epic as well you know the dark desert nights and yeah oh it was insane but on a serious note so at the end I'm, I'm trying to fit in and I'm trying to maybe create some sort of content video photo whatever like to for the next days also for the weekend and but also for the cycling races for Tiffany and and everything are you are you happy with my work so far am i more than happy you know it's it's hard, it's, hard, it's, hard, it's, hard, it's hard to beat Ripke you know it's um, you've got your own own style and uh, it's also nice that you know we, we we can just be ourselves and you know do things which you know, a bit of bit of sense of humor as well, uh, not to be too the serious. Real personalities. Yeah, exactly. And you're a fun person to hang out with, so it's it's really cool. Why do you? Because I try to tell other people I'm really not super talented in, in the pictures or whatever. I'm more I think it's my personality or whatever it is. Like in between, um, is that something you would? Because you're getting photographed a lot, and mm-hmm. people follow you, and you have to do video and photo and whatever. Like. What do you like about people taking pictures of you or video? And what's what's a no go? What's something you should not do if you if you're gonna work with you personally? For me, first of all, no go is like if someone wants to wants to like direct in his very own way that you don't feel comfortable or asks you to do things that you don't feel comfortable. Yeah. You can immediately see it on the on the pic when they pictures picture so you can feel it. Or even when people try to really stage a shot, I think that yeah. it just doesn't look natural and you can see all over a photo. Yeah, anything unnatural is, is no go for me. And and I feel like there's two types of photographers that I like to work with. Um, you're the example of, of one that you just kind of hang around and yeah, you, you always see the cool moments and cool situations and you have a really creative mind on that. And then it's just easy. I just follow you, and you know it goes naturally. And then there's some some photographers that you know they're they're maybe more quiet, and they you almost like you don't see them. Yeah. But then they can also catch the moments, of the real, uh, really cool moments, like behind the scenes, and you never see them. Which is totally right. I never thought of that, but I'm I'm trying to create moments. To yeah, capture exactly. Them. Yeah. So I'm really directing. I'm telling you, hey, there's a nice sign over there. Let's stand there and let's let's do stuff. Um, and that's the opposite of a good documentary photographer is like ah, which is what I do sometimes if, if it's at an event or if you're doing your sport or yeah. you know, whatever is happening you know like then or on the race I'm not telling you hey Tiffany can you go again around that corner I, I need another yeah, shot yeah, of yeah, that yeah, yeah. and I failed hard on droning following you I, I flew two hours of drone waiting for you and not a single one second i catched you always oh, the, the drone died the yeah we got to a spot we thought you're gonna be there like in an hour but it was actually like three hours or yeah. three and a half yeah, yeah so we we screwed up that we got it right on sunday then you got some insane drone footage even when you'd lost a drone at one point you found yeah. it again you got valtry like a good good set of content right yeah so yeah sunday was a little bit better but we did and for me it was kind of interesting too because it was new stuff um it's kind of hard to tell a story now into a one video reel at the end, which is what I gave myself a task. I kind of I researched again and, and thought of, okay, so that's that's the hot shit right now. Reels, one minute storytelling, how was the day in one minute, which is not super easy because it's way too short, um, but it worked out. Like So we, we created a couple of uh, ones. I mean, also for Tiffany, your stuff is, is for your account, it's good, right? So. And for my account, it's it's and it's bringing other people into your people's life, which I like a lot. And and that that humor point is something that's insanely important, I think, because also you, Badri, you with your Finnish mentality, sometimes 
you know, like like I, I gave you shit yesterday when you sent a, a message to to your team, like, hey, like I would do, like, hey guys, what's up? I'm on the way to Miami. See you over there. We're gonna have a great time this weekend. It's gonna be amazing. Are you as stoked as I am? Hey, it's your boy Ripkey in the house. And Marjorie Butters is like, hello. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you need yeah. straight to the point. Yeah, exactly, straight to the point. Which, but still, you're one of the most funniest guys I've ever met. So to transport parts of it into the outside world um, is something I at least tried to do last weekend too with the helmet thing and some some other stuff. You know, yelling at you and you kind of smile and in between and, and you fans need sometimes a little. Yeah, exactly. I, I think you are a good influence for pe per persons like that to really bring out the personality and I think for me it works perfectly. Okay, so what are we doing this weekend? Should I should I direct you? Should I tell you drive a little bit more to the right and, and the light is better over there or should I step down or should I... And one thing, <laughs> I'm being serious, like I didn't take a single picture so far with my camera. Not yeah. One. Yeah, I've seen. I've, you've been carrying the camera, but I haven't seen any big photos. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, should I leave it home and just use? Because as of now, I'm just using iPhone. Yeah. I'm. I put some work into editing on iPhone and uh, also visually. I think I'm quite close to the old Leica M five years ago. Should we ditch the Leica SL, like the real professional camera for the weekend, or should we? Might as well. I'm not no, sure. I'll leave like, it to you. You're the, you're the artist. But, 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 I mean, it's a new surrounding, and I'm not sure if people take me seriously. If I'm walking around, I already look like a hopeless person coming out of bed. <laughs> and if I then don't even have a camera on me and I'm shooting on, on phones, it's going to be. Yeah, know, but, but, yeah, but if you go into the grid, you can you can shoot. You're not allowed the camera on the grid, so oh, really? so you look legit. But the iPhone is fine. Camera more well, like you need to get special stickers and stuff, and that's a bit of a pain. So. Yeah, but I've been yeah. there. I never had a sticker on my camera, and I, I was on the grid. But yeah. if you have your phone, you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. That's kind of nice. Okay, so that's that's the plan to do. Uh, the oath, shit. Is it oath or oat? Oath. Oath. O a t h. What's your oath? Oath. What's your oath? This is um, my oath. What else are you doing besides that? Because like you, it, it seems like there's a couple of things that are coming up. I heard we had a dinner about some gravel race in midsummer in Finland. Like, there's a lot of stuff you guys have on the plane. What what else is? What can we talk about? Well, there's so many things. You know, I've, obviously over the years I've got involved into many different things. You know, from um, coffee ice roasting company to ice hockey team to ah. Uh, all kinds of business ideas and these kind of things. But I think the Oath team is the, the first proper project, passion project we're kind of doing together. Uh, but yeah, like you mentioned, the gravel race, working on that. Uh, hopefully there will be an epic gravel race in Finland next year, uh, okay. around midsummer. And yeah, all kinds it's of things. So, doing, or like, like you're doing, you do it. Yeah, I do. Okay. The plan is to do it um, together with the um, SPG gravel, uh, which is um, the gravel race we did in, in Steamboat Springs last year. So. They have the knowledge. Auto. But also the Oath project, you know, that will grow into other things as well. The gin is just the first first product of it, but stay tuned for some more things that will come out of that. Yeah. Is it the cycling thing because you spend so much time on a bike that you come up with other projects or? We're pretty busy and sometimes it does feel that almost too busy. I don't know, but it's just like, just love to do things that you have passion for. And uh, it's hard to not to do things if you have an opportunity to do it. You also like taking photos during our travels as well. It's always yeah, lots yeah. Of fun. I really love taking photos. You know, yeah. you send me every week new yeah. BB photography. Which yeah. is, uh, very good. You're, you're getting very, very good. At getting it. better. Yeah. And, and the editing part of it is getting better. Yes. Every day. Yeah. Now when I look at my pictures from like two years ago, they are terrible. But then yeah. yeah, but that's that's normal. Like you, you. It's the same with me. Mm. If I look at old pictures, I feel like I edited them wrong because kind of going in a different direction back and forth and okay so uh to wrap this up because it feels honestly what's what's kind of, what's the last week for me you guys seem very happy and like in the middle of what you're doing obviously at least the last week it was it, it really felt that that you're in a in a good place why are you so happy right now so you get to do the things that we love to do 
And yes, it has to be our job as well. But, you know, the thing is, if you're in an unhappy job, find something different because that's why most people are unhappy. And if you can get the mix, a nice balance of both work and play and everything else, it doesn't have to be going to fancy hotels or trips everywhere, like discover new places in your hometown. Like for us, we just love to adventure and yeah, just make everything work within our life and fit in whatever we can on the places we're going instead of just only being a hotel room and only going to the racetrack, for example. It's, yeah, happiness is about sharing things with the people you love most and doing the things that you love to do. And I think we've managed to do that quite well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Common interests, that's really important. And hang out with people who you want to hang out with uh, because life is too short to hang out with the people who you don't like, you'd like to be around. Um, and yeah, follow your heart, follow your passion. What I like also is you're open to changes. It feels like if you like this in three months, then you're going to do this and then something else. And that's something that followed me in my career. You know, like I do this, 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 very different over the last five years. And that's something. Exactly. You know, yeah. some, sometimes we actually talk about like, could be nice to live in America or no, actually Australia could be nice. Uh, like, yeah. like yeah, for we're, us, we're the world adaptable. is like so open to us, like anything in the future is possible and we, we will keep doing what we want to do. And I think because we both started young with what we're doing, it's we've learned to be adaptable and living in different places and adapting to different cultures. So I think that also makes you able to set up somewhere different very easily versus those who've only lived in the one place their whole life. For sure, it's challenging and it's scary. I remember the first time I left Australia, it was super scary, but since then I lived in America, Italy, Spain, Monaco, you know, and you learn, but it's about getting out of your comfort zone. And that's one thing that I think some people struggle with. So it's like, yeah, not being scared to to challenge yourself. Absolutely. I totally agree. That's why I'm closing my 100 uh, travel points on, on B. Um, three places, three good hotels in the world. You can think about it. We can go vice versa. I have one. I start with Les Serenues in Positano, which is just an insane place and uh, my parents had their silver wedding there with all of us so it's, it's a personal place I, I proposed to my wife there so it's it's really really a nice place my personal one of the top three hotels I've ever stayed in um, and then we go in circuits right through your next what's what's a good hotel top three that you really liked Wow, stayed in so many cool places and obviously every place different. I'm gonna go with the obvious where we just tried Amangiri in Utah, in America. Taking that away from Tiffany, that's <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is super tough. Um, Amangiri definitely, but because you've already taken that. Maybe the Four Seasons Punta Mita, that was pretty, pretty beautiful in Mexico. In Mexico. Yeah. Amazing. It was, yeah, super nice. Okay, I go second with uh, Parker, Palm Springs. Ever been there? No. Nope. It's like a Palm Springs blueprint boutique, uh, sort of Elvis Presley, 50s, 60s, insane place, super nice. One of the best places I've been to. And I, I kind of realized it's also my, like, it's where we go for wedding anniversaries with my wife. So something I really like. Um, and it's uh, Parker Palm Springs. Really, really, really good. Do we have more? You know, I keep forgetting the places we've been. We've been to so many places. That Al Fahar Fayar in like the Dubai desert. It was more. Ah, yeah. That was pretty cool by Misk. Okay. It was basically we had the whole place. It was a five bedroom, kind of. You can rent it privately, or you can have lots of people stay there. It had its own pool. It was like just literally side of the highway, middle of the desert. So something. Yeah, just middle of nowhere, just so surrounded by camels and yeah, yeah you had so. like campfires. You had your own pool. It had its own like salt room and things like this. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And yeah. one and only at the Palm, you know, because Dubai has a lot of big hotels. You'd be like, mm. but that one you kind of escape the hustle and bustle of Dubai. I think that was super yeah. beautiful. Well, both them, the Mirage and the the Palm, one and only. And yeah, gotta mention Finland. In, yeah. uh, in the northern Finland, there's lots of beautiful spots. I wouldn't say one particular one, but example, the Arctic tree house in Rovaniemi yeah. is a really cool spot. And then they have lots of those ice igloo things that you can watch the northern lights and stuff. So but actually the house that we built in the north of Finland was based or inspired by the Arctic tree house. Yeah. 
in Red Army. That's my payment for, for this trip. You exactly. are invited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's it's a hard question. I, I can't come around with more than two real like that really touched me on the long term. I mean there's we've been to so many crazy places. In Vietnam, there's like one Grand Hotel or Osaka, the one we talked about, but I, I can't come up with the name of it. But um, yeah, there's there's a couple of nice places. Yeah, and there's still so many to discover. Yeah, and we're gonna go there, and then we're gonna be travel influencers because that's the long term. Yeah, I have a name for it already. Yeah, I've actually planned it all out already. One day, eventually, when I stop my hormone career. We're going to do a world round trip. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yep. Thanks very much for uh, letting me record this over here. We're now going to try to sleep a little bit because it's still... How much more time do we have to... You're not sleeping on planes. Okay? No, I can't sleep. Once I wake up in the morning, no chance. Um, I think we still have like three hours. Three, three hours to go, I would guess. It feels like time. Tiffany... And can I do some advice yep. for the future? Because I've, I've spent the last week with you guys. Um, so Tiffany is quite invested in, in organizing and moving stuff around. So far, whatever Tiffany book was on point, on time, everything worked out, everything was good. More Probably well two ways for me though, to be honest. <laughs> Maybe we move her, we, we make her the travel, the head of the travel operator. What, what is it, like with the little? Uh, with my umbrella? Yeah, like with the an post, umbrella. Follow me. So how long is the plane ride from now on? Well, we're landing at 5 or 5.30 Miami time. About 5.30. It's about three hours to go. I think we swing by the hotel. Yeah. We can drop okay. our stuff there. Go to the pool. And then we to have the... to finish our reel. Make some content. Yeah, exactly. Then we'll finish the day with an oath gin and tonic. With the sunset. That's the plan. One day I'm going to bring you the German uh, gin that I'm going to do. All right. You, you are just ahead of me. That's good. <laughs> okay. Thanks very much. Danke schön. Danke schön. Oh, you're German. We didn't speak your German. You, you. Ja. Du sprichst ja schon relativ viel Deutsch. Ja, ich spreche Sie Deutsch. Ja, das ja, ja, ja. Du genau. Ja auch. Sagst du doch immer mal wieder was. Ja. Ja, hallo. <lacht> <lacht> Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. AWFNR, der Paul-Ribke-Podcast, ist mein Podcast, wo ich jede Woche jemanden aus meinem Telefonbuch anrufe und auf Aufnahme drücke. Und äh, es helfen mir aber auch ein paar Leute dabei. Und zwar die liebe Hanna, die macht das Ganze redaktionell und bereitet es ein bisschen vor und hat zwei, drei Ideen, was wir sonst noch so machen könnten und wo die Reise hingeht. Vielen Dank, liebe Hanna. Und der liebe Simon. Simon schneidet es dann danach und betreut es technisch. Und wie immer freue ich mich natürlich, wenn ihr vielleicht auch mal eine Werbung buchen wollt. Die gibt es bei Pro7. Und äh, alles andere äh, ist, wie es ist, jede Woche dienstags neu in deinem Podcast-Player.